Here's a question on some people's minds. Should I get a crossover or should I get a big seven seat SUV? Well, allow me to introduce to you the Subaru Forester, which presents a very strong case for you to get a crossover. But hold on a minute. The Subaru Forester, the current one, it's been around in the market for quite some time already and you're seeing quite a lot on the road already too. So why would you consider one of these? Well, let's go on a tour, shall we? Now on the surface, the Forester, well, it doesn't really try to convince you to get a crossover over those big pickup-based SUVs because, well, let's face it, the Forester is, how do I put this kindly, subtle looking. But perhaps that's the good thing about the Forester. Its design is good for people who value subtlety and well, blending in just a little bit. And when you take a closer look at it, well, you might appreciate some styling details here and there. Now, when you look at the front of the Forester, well, it's been a familiar sight since 2009, and that's not because it's been the same car since 2009, it's because we've just evolve that styling that's that little bit but hey if it ain't broke don't fix it right so you got these pretty sizable headlights huge grill and well, tastefully applied chrome around here by the fog light housings now this is the 2.0 is model it's the mid-spec model that's because the forester gt is now the new top of the line model so what do you get for this mid-spec forester well you get unique Fog light housings, 18 inch alloys, a bit more chrome on the side mirrors and as well on the roof rails and my personal favorite feature, the huge sunroof up there. Now, when you park it beside the lower spec 2.0 IL EyeSight, well, the difference is, well, they're not, they're not gonna jump out immediately, but well, they both require a closer look and I say these nice little touches done to the 2.0 IS, well, they just make it well, stand out just a little bit more, even if the body itself, well, it's a little bit subtle. Now for the rest of the Forester, well, when you look at it from the side, it pretty much looks the same from way back then, but that is familiarity, and I don't think Subaru wants to alienate any customers anytime soon. And when you get to the back, you get those unique lobster claw tail lights. Now, that's the only bit that sort of love-hate, well, you can't fault Subaru for trying to add a bit of zing to an otherwise, well, ordinary exterior. So that's the exterior done. Let's hop on board to see what's it like inside the Forester. Perhaps the most amusing interior feature, for me at least, is here. Now, underneath this shroud is the multi-information display, and it's one of the most comprehensive ones I've seen. Now, there are several menus, and this is the first screen. Now, you'll notice there is a mini digital Forester display there, and Subaru didn't do that for the sake of vanity. It's actually functional and interactive. Now, check this out. When I turn on the lights, it turns it on too turns on the fog lights and even the rear fog lights. And now for the second screen that shows you your four-wheel drive system, sorry, all-wheel drive system, and an inclinometer. And now for the third screen, so let's say this is your relevant information screen. So it shows you your water temps, your average speed, and even accelerator pressure. In this case, it's shown in a percentage. Now onto the fourth screen. Now that is your fuel economy gauge. Now the fifth screen, fairly basic. It's your clock and your calendar, just to remind you what day it is. The bypass screen even shows you a calendar and a reminder. 
In this case, it says birthday reminder and anniversary reminder. And the latter should be handy for, well, let's just say forgetful husbands. Now also buried in this menu is a maintenance screen. And this is something you typically find in more higher end European luxury cars. So open the screen and it tells you when you should change your oil, your oil filter and whatnot. And well, you can even update it yourself if you do oil changes by yourself. It even reminds you when you should change your tires. Of course, those dates are set by you and only you would know, well, when you change your tires. The car wouldn't know that, will it? It even has a maintenance schedule. So that covers pretty much everything. And it's nice that a car reminds you when you should get your stuff done. And I say it comes in handy, particularly for those who don't really, well, don't really keep track of maintenance schedules. Now we come to the center stack and particularly the infotainment system. Now, like the exterior, well, Subaru followed the if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach. It's almost fuss free to use. You know, it's clearly labeled. You get media, Android, phone settings, Navi, and your settings. So that's the entire front of the Forester covered. Now let's go hop at the back and see what's that like. But before I hop in at the back of the Forester, I want to show you this. You don't see it? Well, did you notice just how wide the doors open? And I say Subaru had families in mind when they designed these doors. Because, well, because of the wide angles, it makes it a lot easier to bring in a child seat. It makes access a lot easier. And the Isofix mounts. They're hidden, but you can easily spot them just by pulling two tabs at the back here. So that's that covered. Let's hop on board. And you'll see that the Forester has a lot of leg room, knee room, and well, even hip room. Now certainly space isn't gonna be lacking at the back of the Forester. Even headroom is pretty good, considering there is a massive panoramic sunroof up there. I do have to note that entry-level models without that sunroof have even more headroom. Now, what can I see here at the back of the Forester? Well, a couple of things I noticed. It doesn't have the soft padding like the front. This bit, it's hard plastic. Although, they did at least keep the leather padding on most of the door panel and even the armrest is also soft padded. Door bottles, it can hold a one liter bottle and it is, well, fairly deep as well. And another neat feature here at the back of the Forester, you have three pockets here behind the two front seats. So you have your main pocket, which is good for magazines, newspapers, maps, and whatnot. A slightly smaller pocket for smaller items and another small pocket just for good measure. It's also nice that Subaru put in two USB ports here at the back, which is why I'm wondering why Subaru only placed one there at the front. But I digress. So let's say you're carrying passengers here at the back. They don't have to argue over one USB port anymore. And it puts out 2.1 amperes, so it should charge your phone just that little bit quicker. So with that much USB ports and the Forester, there really isn't an excuse to run out of charge. Now for the armrest, let's see what it has. It comes integrated with two cup holders. And if that's not enough, there are two more cup holders there and a bottle holder on each door. So there's a total of two, four, six, eight drink holders here in the Forester. So that's the back covered. Since we're talking about a crossover, let's see what the cargo area is like. Now, of course, one of the reasons why you're considering a crossover is this cargo space. Now, take this away and here's the full view of it. Now, my observation is, well, it's not one of the longest, but it is one of the widest. So that gives you over 500 liters of cargo space. It's not the biggest, I have to tell you that. But just looking at it, I'm not really going to complain about well, 500 liters of space, because you can chuck in a lot of items here. And that's without folding the second row seats. And to fold those, all you have to do is press button 
on each side of the panels. Same for the other side. And with the second row folded down, you have over 1,770 liters of space there. So you can stow in long items or tall items without much fuss at the back of the Forester. Now, this is the top of the line model, so it comes with a power tailgate. Now, typically, I'm not a fan of power tailgates, but I'll give a pass for the Forester because it is fairly quick. Just look. Well, sure, it's still slower than pulling it yourself, but as far as power tailgates go, this is well, pretty acceptable. But before we go for a drive, I want to show you this. Now, it looks like a piece of metal so just sticking out from the door, but it serves a very important purpose. See, this bit of metal prevents the doors from being jammed shut in an event of a side impact, making it easier to open when the unfortunate happens. So that shows you just how serious Subaru is when it comes to safety. So we've covered that, now it's time to go for a drive. Forester is powered by a 2-liter flat 4 or boxer engine. Now, unfortunately, you can't get a turbocharged version anymore. That's uh, strictly reserved for the previous generations. So, without a turbo, how does the Forester feel? Well, to be rather blunt, well, I think we need the 2.5-liter here. I'm not saying it's slow, but because of that extra weight of the all-wheel drive system, it does need a little more motivation when you're trying to overtake someone or something. Granted, it doesn't sound like it's running out of breath when you're doing an overtake. But you can hear the engine just being that tiny bit more vocal than usual. And you have to press that accelerator just that little bit more. Still, not for a daily drive, it's actually not bad. It's perfectly adequate. But it, Really, it's nothing more or nothing less in the case of this engine. At least it does return much better fuel economy. Now, one common complaint previous owners of Foresters have always mentioned is fuel consumption. So is it any different in this new Forester? Well, in some ways, it is an improvement, a marked improvement, especially if you're coming from the past two generations. You see, this one is surprisingly efficient considering it's carrying the weight of a four-wheel drive system. Sorry, all-wheel drive system. And I've been driving from Bacoor to Quezon City every day for the past couple of days. And my average consumption so far has been 12.3 liters per 100 kilometers. So that's a hair over 8 kilometers per liter. Granted, there's a little bit of highway driving involved, but if you've noticed the traffic lately, it's been getting worse and getting heavier. So all things considered, for this Forester, fuel economy is well, much better. And it's even much, much improved out on the highway because out on the highway at an average of about 80 to 100 kilometers per hour, I saw the Forester register about 16 liters per 100 kilometers. So that's about Mm, give or take about 15 to 16 kilometers per liter. And those figures are unimaginable in past foresters. Now you could easily do it with this. And I wasn't even hypermiling or anything, which makes the feat even more impressive. So if you get a forester, a new forester, you don't have to worry much about fuel economy. Now I have to say that one of my favorite forester generations, or probably my favorite forester generation, is what Subaru fans would call the SH. It's the one that's two generations before this one. Uh, I like the ride of that. I like the performance of that. It just ate so much fuel. So the previous generation, well, 
I liked it, but I just found the right to touch on the firm side. This one is a return to form. It's much more comfortable than the previous generation. Bomb absorption, very good. Now, it doesn't feel too firm. It's just right, and I could best describe the ride as supple. Granted, there are some crossovers that ride just a little bit better, but I have to say the Forester is one of the more comfortable ones you can get. Now, when it comes to handling though, well, no matter what variant of Forester you get, you get all-wheel drive as standard. So, that's a big benefit if you're going to places with dirt roads and stuff like that. Or, if you're here, and well, right now it is drizzling, and the roads are gonna get a bit caked with dirt and grime and stuff like that, you get that extra bit of traction coming from the rear wheels. And that also helps when you're going up a slippery ramp or a slippery slope, because, well, again, not only does it have stability control and traction control, you have the benefit of all-wheel drive. Now, what does that do for handling? Well, if you're driving it regularly, well, not much, but the all-wheel drive system comes into play when it comes to emergency maneuvers because you have that extra bit of road holding keeping you glued to the road. Plus, Subaru Stability Control System is one of the best out there. Now, gripes, well, it is a few and far between. I have to talk about the steering. Now, it is direct and it is precise. However, it's not the most communicative nor the most talkative. But then again, this is a family crossover. And most of the people who will buy it want something that's comfortable, easy to drive, and something that doesn't tire them out to shuttle their families with. Most of the people who will buy this, well, they're parents. Mothers, fathers, stuff like that. So, heavy steering isn't really an option for this, the Forester. But the light steering does mean that, well, you're not gonna get tired driving it. But if there's another thing I would like Subaru to pay attention to is the door locks. Now, it does come with door locks, but it doesn't have automatic door locks. If you notice some cars, when you put them in drive, the doors are gonna lock by themselves or when you reach a certain speed. But that's just not the case in the Forester. You have to press them yourself. I mean, sure, that's a nice feature to have in a car from the past, but well, you expect automatic door locks in a car like this. Also, it would have been nice if Subaru also added an automatic dimming rear view mirror. You still get this rather old school toggle up here. Now, other than that, the forest is fine. Now, Subaru is very proud of their eyesight system, so now would be a good time to test it out. Now, I've spent the speed, and what's good about eyesight is you don't have to constantly adjust it. So, whatever speed the car in front is doing, it will do too. So there's no need to step on the gas or the brake just to adjust. Now, if the car in front is doing 40 and I set the speed at 60, I'm gonna do 40, unless I switch to a different lane. And that beat means the road ahead is clear and I can, or the car can, accelerate to the speed I set it. Now, EyeSight also includes automatic emergency braking. Now, I don't plan to replicate it right now and I don't plan to test it out out in public but that doesn't mean I don't have faith in it but I will tell you that it works when I last tried it out in, a, in Singapore and for a couple of times here. Now another good thing about EyeSight is you know, since it's gonna follow the car in front when it slows down you also slow down but when the car in front stops it'll also do the stopping for you. So you can drive this car without much input, without much pedal input. However, that doesn't mean you should take your eyes off the road. That's because it's called eyesight, doesn't mean it does the driving for you and it does everything for you. Remember, this is a driver assist and not a full autopilot system. Now, last but not least is one more feature of eyesight, which is lane departure warning. Now, the system only works if the lanes are clearly defined. So you're driving along a road with the lanes barely painted on, it's not gonna work. It's not really gonna alert you. But when you're out on the highway, let's say on the EX or NLEX or stuff like that, it will read the lanes and it will remind you that you're slowly straying out of your lane. And it reminds you to sort of 
steer your way back in. It does so in the most subtle and gentle way. And it's not annoying, so it's a system I would personally leave on. Especially if you're going out for a long highway cruise where you tend to dilly about in between lanes. So this new Forester isn't what we'd call sporty. But then again, all non-turbo Foresters were never meant to be sporty. Well, people have it in their heads that when they say Forester, it's the turbo model. But that's just not the case anymore. The priorities of the Forester have shifted into a more family-oriented means of transport. And I'm not complaining about that. At the start, I said, do you need a crossover or do you need a large pickup-based seven-seat SUV? Well, answer these questions. Do you often carry seven passengers? And are you willing to sacrifice some comfort for the sake of more loading capacity? And are you willing to pay more for maintenance? Because well, it is a heavier vehicle, so you might have to pay more for wear and tear stuff. If you said no to all three of those, perhaps you're more of a crossover person. And it's also one of the reasons why you should consider the Subaru Forester. Now, I will say it's not perfect. I think it just needs a little bit more power and a little more automatic stuff like a rear dimming mirror and the automatic locks. It also doesn't have the largest cargo area among its peers, but over 500 liters ain't half bad now, is it? So. The Forester does make up for all of those by offering a comfortable ride, reasonable fuel economy, and more maneuverability over larger SUVs. And if you don't often carry seven passengers with you, five will be perfectly fine in here because it offers so much space. Now here's the kicker. This particular Forester variant, the 2.0 IS, starts at a little over 2 million pesos and knocking out the door of 2.1 million pesos. And that's, well, knocking on the door of larger seven-seat pickup-based SUVs. But again, answer those questions if you're willing to sacrifice some comfort for the sake of loading capacity. Well, you go get that bigger SUV you always wanted, but give this a try first and then reconsider your options. You'll be surprised at what the Forester can offer, even if it is smaller. Now this has been Anton and Jess of AutoIndustria.com. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and on Twitter as well. Thanks for watching.